Last week, I told you what dark energy is and why astrophysicists believe it exists. This week, I want to tell you about a recent paper that claims dark energy does not exist. To briefly remind you, dark energy is what speeds up the expansion of the universe. In contrast to all other types of matter and energy, dark energy does not dilute if the universe expands. This means that eventually all the other stuff is more dilute than dark energy and therefore it's the dark energy that determines the ultimate fate of our universe. If dark energy is real, the universe will expand faster and faster until all eternity. If there is no dark energy, the expansion will slow down instead and it might even reverse, in which case the universe will collapse back to a point. I don't know about you, but I would like to know what is going to happen with our universe. So what do we know about dark energy? The most important evidence we have for the existence of dark energy comes from supernova redshifts. Saul Perlmutter and Adam Rees won a Nobel Prize for this observation in 2011. It's this Nobel Prize winning discovery which the new paper calls into question. You find the reference in the information below the video. Supernovae give us information about dark energy because some of them are very regular. These are the so-called type 1a supernovae. Astrophysicists understand quite well how these supernovae happen. This allows physicists to calculate how much light these blasts emit as a function of time. So they know what was emitted. But the farther away the supernova is from us, the dimmer it appears. So if you observe one of these supernovae, you can infer its distance from the brightness. At the same time, you can also determine the color of the light. Now, and this is the important point, this light from the supernova will stretch if space expands while the light travels from the supernova to us. This means that the wavelengths we observe here on Earth are longer than they were at emission. Or to put it differently, the light arrives here with a frequency that is shifted to the red. This redshift of the light therefore tells us something about the expansion of the universe. Now, the farther away a supernova is, the longer it takes the light to reach us and the longer ago the supernova must have happened. This means that if you measure supernovae at different distances, they really happen at different times and you know how the expansion of space changes with time. And this is, in a nutshell, what Perlmutter and Rees did. They used the distance inferred from the brightness and the redshift of type 1a supernovae and found that the only way to explain both types of measurements is that the expansion of the universe is getting faster. And this means that dark energy must exist. Now, Perlmutter and Rees did their analysis 20 years ago and they used a fairly small sample of about 110 supernovae. Meanwhile, we have data for more than 1000 supernovae. For the new paper, the researchers used 740 supernovae from the GLA catalog. But they also explain that if one just uses the data from this catalog as it is, one gets a wrong result. The reason is that the data has been corrected already. This correction is made because the story that I just told you about the redshift is more complicated than I made it sound. That's because the frequency of light from a distant source can also shift just because our galaxy moves relative to the source. More generally, both our galaxy and the source move relative to the average rest frame of stuff in the universe. And it is this latter frame that one wants to make a statement about when it comes to the expansion of the universe. How do you even make such a correction? Well, you need to have some information about the motion of our galaxy from observations other than supernovae. You can do that by relying on regularities in the emission of light from galaxies and galaxy clusters. This allows astrophysicists to create a map with the velocities of galaxies around us, called the bulk flow. But the details don't matter all that much. To understand this new paper, you only need to know that the authors had to go and reverse this correction to get the original data. And then they fitted the original data, rather than using data that were basically assumed to converge to the cosmological average. What they found is that the best fit to the data is that the redshift of supernovae 
is not the same in all directions, but that it depends on the direction. This direction is aligned with the direction in which we move through the cosmic microwave background. And most importantly, you do not need further redshift to explain the observations. If what they say is correct, then it is unnecessary to postulate dark energy, which means that the expansion of the universe might not speed up after all. Why didn't Perlmutter and Rees come to this conclusion? They could not, because the supernovae that they looked at all came from the same direction of the sky. And that direction happens to be pretty much opposite to the CMB dipole. And if you look only in one direction, you can't tell if the effect you see is the same in all directions. What is with the other evidence for dark energy? Well, all the other evidence for dark energy is not evidence for dark energy in particular, but for a certain combination of parameters in the concordance model of cosmology. These parameters include, among other things, the amount of dark matter, the amount of normal matter and the Hubble rate. There is, for example, the data from baryon acoustic oscillations and from the cosmic microwave background, which are currently best fit by the presence of dark energy. But if the new paper is correct, then the current best fit parameters for those other measurements no longer agree with those of the supernovae measurements. This does not mean that the new paper is wrong. It means that one has to reanalyze the complete set of data to find out what is overall the combination of parameters that makes the best fit. This paper, I have to emphasize, has been peer-reviewed, is published in a high-quality journal, and the analysis meets the current scientific standard of the field. It is not a result that can be easily dismissed and it deserves to be taken very seriously, especially because it calls into question a Nobel Prize winning discovery. This analysis has of course to be checked by other groups and I'm sure we will hear about this again, so stay tuned.